Let's take a look at what's under the hood. So we're opening the top cover. In here, there's a couple of things I want to point out. One is these are the ink tubes that feed the printer. And the ink comes from around here, goes around here, and this thing over here is the printhead. It moves back and forth. When you, when you fill the printer for the first time, when you charge it for the first time, it uses about a third of the regular size cartridges, and obviously about half that if you're using the large cartridges, to put ink in these tubes. And so that's where it is. If you look straight down, you'll see the transport belt. This is an electrostatically charged transport belt that holds the paper in place as it moves through the printer. And so the paper will be under here. The printhead is obviously printing on top of the paper, spraying ink down. So it's a very elegant design, quite robust. This is, on the left side of the printer, this is where we connect our computer to the printer. And it has a little nifty little cover. You take this off. And if you look inside, you'll see two connectors. One is for USB and one is for Ethernet. Uh, USB is very handy, of course, just plug it in. Um, the Ethernet is my favorite because if we're, we're connected to the printer through Ethernet, we can bring up the web server that's built into the printer and we can see more information about, say, the ink levels, things like that. So after you connect your cable, what you're going to do is you'll put the cover back on and you're going to route your, your connectors down here through this slot. One of the things over here I want to mention about the power is that I recommend that you purchase an inexpensive UPS that's an uninterruptible power supply. I like the APC brand and I recommend that the printer and your computer be connected to a UPS. A UPS will provide a few minutes of, of power if in the case of a power failure and it also will provide some amount of surge protection uh, for, for momentary small power problems. Uh, nothing, of course, will protect your computer or printer from a lightning strike. This is the back of the printer, and if you're familiar with the existing printer, the SG7100, there's a huge duplex unit sitting here. Well, that's not here because we don't need to do duplexing with sublimation. Duplexing is printing on both sides. So it makes the printer much more compact and more reliable. And this panel here is designed in case there's a jam, it provides access to the rear of the printer. So you flip those little levers and you can open this. You can see and you could pull out a piece of paper if necessary. Right here is the connector for the bypass tray. It looks strange, but it's a floating connector so that it makes installation and mating easy. So that's not a problem when you see it crooked there. Okay, our printer is charged and in a ready state. And I want to note a couple of things before we load paper. This is the paper output holder here. You can extend it so that when the paper does come out, it doesn't fall to the floor. All right, now let's go ahead and remove our tray. Let's put you in here, pull it out, and we will show you how to load it. All right, here's our paper tray. First, I'm going to show you how to expand the paper tray. And by expanding it, it's equipped to hold all paper sizes, small and large. So first, we push this little tip here and here. And then we grasp it, and it expands. How neat is that? All right, so we're going to clip them back into place. First, I want you to note that we're going to frame the paper on three sides, this, this, and this side and the paper will come out of here. It pulls out of here like a C. So when we load paper in the tray, we want to load it with the print side face down, which is generally the bright white side. All right, so let's frame the paper. So we push this, and then we can adjust the sliders. We always load this tray in what we call portrait mode, meaning it's, it's long edge here, kind of thing. And so we're going to close these, and then we'll push this forward here, and we frame the paper. With it expanded like this, we're able to accommodate 11 by 17 legal and letter papers. If you want to use the small insert papers, we need to collapse the tray again. Do this number here. Pull the tab back. And then using the insert paper, now we can frame it. All right, let's go ahead and put this tray back in the printer and do some tests. 
Okay, I've put plain letter size paper in the tray, and now we're going to put it in the printer. This printer has a little cover for the paper that extends like that, so really neat. And now we're ready to do our test. Let's take a quick tour of the front panel here. We, of course, got our power key, and then we have our alert. This will turn red when, for instance, you run out of paper or an ink cartridge is empty. And then we have the enter key, and we have our menu key, which also doubles as a down arrow key, the up arrow key, and the escape key causes to go up a level or backwards. We also have our job reset key, so if you want to cancel a job at the printer, generally you'd first pull out the paper tray to stop more paper from going in the printer, then you're going to push the job reset key, and then you're going to push the enter key twice. And occasionally you'll need to push the form feed key, like if it runs out of paper and doesn't start printing again. All right, so let's go through the, the front panel kinds of things. And there's a lot of things here, so we're not going to go through them all. I do have other videos for that. So first we're going to push the menu key. Now often you may need to push it twice if the printer goes to sleep. So now I'm back at ready. We're going to push it one more time. And I'm going to go down arrow key, and I'm going to get to list test print. And this is a, a report that we're going to run on the printer and it tells us basically um, all about the printer. What is the version of firmware that's in the printer, that kind of thing. And so to run this, once we're at that menu, we're going to push the enter key twice. Once and then twice. Now this is a two-page report. Obviously when you do this, I would recommend you load plain paper in it. Okay. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to go back to ready and by pushing the escape key and we're going to run the nozzle check. Very similar, you'll push the menu key and we'll push the down arrow key until the display reads maintenance and then at maintenance we're going to push the enter key three times. One, two, three. And what is the nozzle check? The nozzle check shows us the health of the printer. It indicates if we're printing with all our colors and to make sure that each nozzle on the print head is, is firing with ink. Now let's put it back to ready and we're going to take a look at these reports. This is a list test page and the things to look at are the version number of the printer. That's the firmware and it will, will be updated when necessary and then our ink levels. And as we'll see later on in the video, these ink levels are not very accurate so you'll find out they're quite a bit different. This is our nozzle check. It shows all our colors and it shows the two print heads, number one and number two. And that's of course a cyan, black, yellow, and magenta. For sublimation decorating, we need to print on paper. And then we carry the paper to our heat press where we marry it up with our substrate for sublimation decorating. These papers are technically called release papers. They're not transfer papers. They don't have an emulsion layer. So it's the ink that's doing the work, not the paper. The purpose of paper is to keep the ink on the paper, but minimize dot gain, how much it expands. Also, we want to make sure the ink doesn't seep too far into the paper, because if it does, it's hard to come out. There are two papers that we've used over these many years. The Textprint R paper, which is from our friends at Beaver, and the Ditrans SPP, which is our formula. Both papers are somewhat interchangeable. The Ditrans have been very traditional papers, excellent release, excellent color, and the Textprint have been papers that um, I like for, for instance, for soft substrates. But they're, they're very close to each other kind of stuff. So our goal has been to cut the paper in the size that is for the substrate. And so that's not, of course, how papers were, sizes of papers were designed. Uh, they were designed for printers. So we now cut the paper in many sizes. For instance, this particular size is 3.5 by 6. And that's the great size for many of the device covers like iPhone covers. Then we have sizes that are pre-cut for mugs. This is our mug 11. This is our mug 15. And so that makes it very convenient, especially for people like me that are left-handed and can't possibly cut well, so forth. Then we have other papers um, that really push the laws of physics. For instance, we have a paper here that is 11.75 by 17. 
This particular paper will actually go in the bottom tray of the SG-800, SG-7100, uh, the E-7700, and also the GX-7000. So this paper provides an additional, just a little bit larger width to accommodate um, 11 inch substrates with some bleed. So talk to your Condi rep, I'm sure we've got a paper that will efficiently use your substrates. And that's really the name of the game, is to do things very efficiently without waste. Got a bunch of papers. One of the newest papers is this paper. This is 8.5 by 21 inches. And of course it needs to run through the SG-800 bypass tray, which we'll get to. And so again, just accommodating strained substrates, longer substrates, um, is our goal at Condi. If you have a suggestion about a paper size you'd like to see, since it's our paper, we can cut it to whatever size makes sense for you. Now we're ready to install the bypass tray. It's an optional accessory I strongly recommend because it's inexpensive and it extends the capabilities of the printer to a 13 inch width. To install it, we just push down the little gray tabs, bring it up to the back of the printer, push in and let go, and there. Now, it has a little backstop here, and the backstop is used to hold the paper in place uh, when you load it with paper. And so we pull it up here, and you can just see how it unfolds and, you know, kind of things it does like that. So really neat product, um, very easy. You'll load the paper with the bright white side face up. Now we're going to turn it around and take a look at it. Okay, we'll adjust this first to accommodate the width of our paper. It's set for 13 inches. This is the Condi 13 by 21 paper. And you got it right there. And that's as easy as it is. Installing the extra tray is very easy. We just simply laid the printer on top of it. It snaps together and you're ready to go. There are two things I want to bolt in place that come with the tray and with the bypass. And let me show you those. Okay, this part here in the screw keeps the tray bolted to the uh, top of the printer here. And just put it in place, install the screw, and then using my trusty Leatherman, we screw it in place, and it will keep the printer from separating from the extra tray. We're looking at the back left corner of the printer, and this little foot here keeps the printer from, from tilting and so forth. And so we install it just like this. Using my trusty Leatherman, we tighten it up. After we've installed all our optional accessories, remember to cycle power on the printer. You'll need to do that in, in order for the printer to see the new accessories. Now that we're wrapped up here with the assembly of the printer, we're going to hook up my laptop and we're going to do some printing. 